Next, the first of our new series, Art Fusion, which gives St. Louis area arts leaders and thinkers the opportunities to share their insights and perspectives. First, David Robertson, music director of the St. Louis Symphony, shares his thoughts with us on classical music, past, present, and future. Musicians tend in the classical branch, the side that my St. Louis Symphony Orchestra plays in, to, to really feel as though we're guardians. And we, we take this very seriously because music that was written by someone who died 250, 300 years ago has something to tell us today. At the same time, the more that you're conversant with that, the more you realize that this is not a tradition which stopped at some point, but is continuing today. We recently played a new piece by John Adams that was only a, about a month old when we played it. And this sense of the freshness of it, of bringing to bear our knowledge of how he thinks about music, what he's experienced in his lifetime, the things that are going on in our contemporary society, is something that is, is very important to us and it helps us build a bridge to things which might seem distant. There's this wonderful book by the historian Barbara Tuchman a number of years ago called A Distant Mirror. And it was looking at the 14th century and how so many things in the 14th century are similar to things that were happening in the late 20th century and attitudes and shifting ideas about this or that. And so, so much of what we do in, in our musical life requires a knowledge of the past and a point of view where one foot is firmly in the present because all of us are living in the now. And so music that is being written right now by a huge variety of composers is something that we constantly look at how we can bring it in in a meaningful way to both enliven the dialogue that happens in a concert and at the same time take us to new places that we haven't been to before and reveal to us things that we may not have, have realized but that are right before us. Everybody needs a, like a uh, a moniker or some sort of, you know, um, etiquette that they can put on a, on a box and then say, okay, I know what that is. And so there's this whole reductionist way in, in the, that we learn things. Um, you know, you say something is a tree and one of them is a, is a fir and the other one is a palm. Um, and, you know, for a, a child looks and says, really? Those two are the same thing, but they don't look anything like each other. And they're, they're right in that. One of the things that is actually really important and that to some extent defines this notion of classical music, and it's, re it's relatively strange, is the notion that it's not filtered. When we do music, our original idea is someone with a voice or someone with an instrument creates a sound for you in a space and that sound then is communicated to someone else without anything else. There are no microphones that get, it's not processed, it doesn't have um, some kind of added material. There's nothing in it except the real thing itself, the actual sound we make, whether it's soft or whether it's loud, whether it's fast or slow, whether it's um, complex or whether it's simple. This notion of we have a sound that we want to give and that it's part of this whole progression of human expression with music is the basis of where classical music comes from. And this is why classical music has been so successful at really bringing in many different forms of music and why the notion of classical, which really in musical historical terms, refers from about the 1780s until about the 1810 period, this period where we call classical composers, Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, early Beethoven, Salieri, um, you know, homo, um, you just, there, there are lots of different, different composers, many of whom are, are well, less well known. These are also part of the same group where we put Bach and we put Schubert and we put Schumann and we put Aaron Copland and we put Gustav Mahler and we put Toru Takamitsu, Japanese composer. And so from all of these different cultures, there are these people who bring their point of view 
and like some extraordinary um, meeting place, some agora or, or market square, all of these different people come with their viewpoints. And you see this in an orchestra. All of the different instruments have a different sound. They all have different histories and come from a different place. And yet it's the dialogue of all of these differences that come together to form a unity, which is what makes the whole classical music metaphor such a fantastic one for life.